So welcome everyone to uh, our lecture on cross-border relations. We are getting closer to, to the end of this uh, module on um, regional geography of Southern Europe and uh, before the cross-border uh, uh, cooperation as a definition and as practical examples, we'll wrap up the, the previous lecture on research and development as, uh, as we mostly comment and debated the smart uh, specialization. Uh, so I will try to go through the, the lecture and, uh, and see if we have some time remaining at the end uh, for discussion and uh, mainly clarify some issues that, uh, that uh, if you have about the the, the exam or the essay and, um, and other follow-ups as, uh, as needed. So trying to here wrapping up the, the, the previous lecture, research and development, which somehow also helps us to step forward on the cross-border relations, cross-border cooperation uh, in the, within the European Union, uh, in particular in southern part of uh, Europe. However, we'll be also underlining examples from um, other uh, other other geographies, other regional geographies. So this is the kind of lecture that is. Uh, uh, to me, it's difficult to, to draw uh, questions for an exam at this level. Those questions, they will be very much superficial of defining this, defining that, and that's not really the intention here within this model, in particular at this level uh, of, uh, of, uh, of higher education. The forthcoming one on Southern Europe and sustainability transitions will be uh, more conceptual. And here there are certainly concepts that is important for you to keep in mind and have some knowledge about it. I'm not telling that today's lecture uh, uh, is, is relevant, not at all. It's also relevant to understand the overall uh, philosophy of cohesion policy within Europe. Also builds very much on previous lectures number six and seven. Uh, and then the lecture number 10 will certainly is a fundamental uh, pillar of uh, the dis of discussions on uh, regional geography towards the future on regional futures and uh, and sustainability is certainly a central pillar on forthcoming debates in um, in um, in Europe and elsewhere in the world and then uh, let's go back to the research and development here in general uh, uh, the general understanding of research and development will underline some of these key aspects many other domains could have been explored so i bring only one side of the story and the lecture essentially brings to you some some overall topics that would eventually be explored in a essay or in some more elaborated work within within your studies if these are within the field of your of your interest so research and development activities policies, uh, financial schemes, they are uh, uh, fundamental drivers of innovation. And uh, mo mostly the statistics underline two sides, the, the how such investments or expenditure in research and development contribute to innovation processes and also in quantitative terms, uh, uh, what countries around the world invest or spend in research and, and development. And these are indicators to monitoring the, 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 the process, the evolution, and uh, the, the, the quality of, uh, of um, a specific economy. Uh, and is a fundamental indicator to assess precisely how a country is performing performing in terms of of uh, uh, in terms of uh, in economical terms and also in the social component mainly that one related with the with the application of high skilled labor force and uh, um, uh, uh, in comparison that we have here as underlining the figure, the research and development expenditure of the overall European Union countries in 2009 was about 2.19% uh, of the of the gross domestic product of the of, of the overall European Union. Uh, a very quantitative element, a quantitative uh, uh, metric here that is 
difficult, somewhat difficult to grasp and doesn't reveal much uh, about what is really going on in terms of research and development in the European Union. It works in the macroeconomical terms to make a comparison with other geographies in the world. And we see, for example, South Korea, Japan, United States, they are the leaders in, spend, in, in spending part of their uh, percentage of their GDP uh, on research and development activities, research and development policies, processes and projects. And we see also that the European Union uh, still ahead of countries such as China, UK, Russia and Turkey as well. Now, what I bring here and is a key lesson of this part of the lecture and also of the others is the importance of doing it uh, a cross fertilization or a cross analysis of different indicators of different statistics or metrics depends of what you call. So if we look at these numbers of percentage in terms of expenditure, we are seeing that, okay, United States, one leader uh, in terms of the GDP in 2021 is investing a substantial uh, a percentage, not necessarily substantial, a percentage for research and development, and they enter here eventually a, a, a cycle of the investment uh, on um, research and development and innovation then contributes to a better economic performance. We also have here uh, in line with this indicator, Japan and South Korea also leaders uh, uh, leaders in terms of uh, the global GDP uh, yeah, GDP in the in the world, followed by a number of countries in the in Europe, mainly Germany, France and a Southern European country, Italy, a very interesting element here to keep in mind for what comes next in the next, uh, in the next slides. And of course, all these comparisons are dangerous if they remain superficially explored. And somehow that's what I have been trying to convey to you and the message that I want you to take home from these uh, uh, overall 11 lectures on regional geographies, the importance of embracing a critical mind regarding certain topics when you are looking at one specific indicator, such as the GDP, is important also to disentangle other social and economic indicators in this regarding. Underlining here that the GDP of the United States equals uh, the GDP of about 170 uh, countries. So those performing well in terms of global uh, um, in, in gross domestic product, they also invest in research and development and this also helps to reveal the importance of such a domain within the society for the support of, for the social economic development of uh, societies and um, regional and economic geographies. Uh, then so we go back now specifically to research and development, a number of, of slides here covering different periods of time. You know that in regional geography, making this, this uh, or trying to develop this understanding between uh, within the specific time frame or involving different geographies is, a, is, a, is important. And I bring here mostly one uh, element from uh, this, this situation of a post-financial crisis. We have been debating this a lot uh, regarding other, other, um, other domains, 2007, 2008, uh, and how the countries mainly in Southern Europe react to this crisis and a value of today, how of 2017, uh, how they are performing in terms of expenditure on research and development. We see here Southern Europe, Italy, Portugal, Spain and Greece considerably below the average of, of expenditure in the research and development within the European Union in 2017, 2.07%. Now is uh, a bit higher, about 2.2%. 2.2 percent, uh, and they have, we have also uh, the data also reveal some disparities across Southern Europe. And curious to analyze, and this will come through also in the next slides. Um, I will come through in the next slides that uh, countries such as Portugal, uh, severe affected by the crisis in 2007, 2008, they are actually performing uh, considerably better than the countries that a country in this case Italy that uh, is is um, is a, a stronger economy in comparison to the one of Portugal in taking here the GDP as the main I main um, in indicator. So there are also considerable, although they are here very close in quantitative terms, still far from the European Union average, they uh, there are some disparities across um, 
across uh, southern Europe. And here a more uh, complex table and the I focus only on some of these elements. And we here have a comparison between 2007 and 2017. So a moment of uh, crisis and a moment of post-crisis 10 years after that. And the highlight of the data shows that Portugal increased higher education expenditure and decreased government expenditure slightly. So as, as a country, they decided to invest mostly on higher education and research and development is currently being driven by higher education institutions. And this is uh, uh, here that the, the percentage is considerably higher if comparing if we compare 2007, 2017. Also, also the same, uh, uh, the same um, uh, applies on Italy and Greece, uh, considerably higher percentages, but in the case of uh, the business enterprises, our business enterprises, the percentage of business investments uh, onto research and development. And the other uh, countries in Southern Europe, they are investing less on higher education or investing less on the component of higher education that mainly concentrates resources, financial and human uh, on research and development activities. So underlining here, the differences across Southern Europe as well as across Europe, but now we are focused on the Southern part in terms of how they spend uh, uh, their gross domestic product on the research and development activities from the private sector, most really with the business or within the higher, higher education. Here, interesting, interesting to see these, uh, these, uh, the comparison of these, uh, of these elements, which also reveal how these countries have embraced the financial package that came through from uh, the European Union and other uh, affiliated entities uh, affiliated in the context of support in the post-financial crisis of uh, international monetary funding, how they use these resources to support that um, or to overcome their economic deficit. Again, I bring data from 2019. We see here a uh, slightly changed in terms of position, Portugal gaining, uh, gaining position in comparison to Spain and Greece. Still, these countries of Southern Europe remain below the uh, European average in terms of expenditure on research and development. And here this uh, world, if you then show this, this graph in, in, in a conference, in a presentation, it can be it can, you can draw many lessons from from the graph and you can then derive here different type of conclusions and one possibility is analyzing this this uh, investment this percentage of expenditure in research and development with early levers from education for example among other uh, metrics that you could you could analyze here so we see an evolution in terms of um, of uh, uh, expenditure on research and development, yet these uh, countries in Southern Europe, particularly Portugal, Italy, and Spain, they remain or, or they figure in terms of early leavers, the percentage of the population between 18 and 24 that leaves the, uh, leaves the, the compulsory educational system remains rather high. And this is of concern, certainly as it impacts the overall qualification of the workforce, it eventually also contributes to migration patterns across Europe. So when we see one or such, such indicators, it's important to step back, sit down, bring different data together, bring also different elements here to have a more elaborated assessment. Of course, you can also criticize me once again of bringing only uh, this data somehow here to illustrate what is going on. And that's also the purpose of having this very, very yet diverse yet interlinked lecture within regional geography. So I will somehow bring you some tips that eventually you will be able to explore further. So it's important to have one indicator and bring others to, to compare. Okay, they are investing considerably in research and development. This is certainly beneficial for social economic development. It's important also to, come, to analyze that yet this, 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 uh, this indicator here of the early levers from, this, from education and training remains rather high. And this also brings consequences for the labor market and overall also in social development of these societies in the Southern in southern parts of Europe. More of concern if we disentangle this instead of talking about uh, 
regional geography of Southern Europe. If we talk about the sub-regional geographies of Southern Europe, we see here Southern Spain with a specific economic geography. We talked about this and then the regions in Southern parts of Italy uh, somehow taking here the lead in terms of the early livers. And in this regarding, very curious also, and there is a graph which will underline this, this interesting data here um, for Greece, uh, somehow at the forefront of known early leavers from our, our from education and training. So, um, students within uh, this time frame of eighteen twenty four years, they stay in the in the educational system longer when compared to these regions of southern Spain and also southern Italy. So, highlight take home lesson is important to have this cross fertilization of data. And unfortunately, still a lot of gaps in terms of the data availability covering certain domains of society and covering, covering geographies even within, within Europe. It's not always easy to have the same type of indicator across all these geographies of Europe to make, to make a, a more cohesive and uniform analysis. Anyway, it's possible through these sources such as Eurostat, for example, bring some interesting data all together. Here an indicator on the human resources in science and technology and the per the, of the percentage of the labor force in 2018. You also see here, that's okay, I have data for 2017, 2019, then uh, 2019 again, so it's, it's also very challenging to, to bring data exactly the same indicator for different type of, for different years and we see here also another uh, point to to or another indicator we can be critical and shows the disparities across the European Union is the percentage of of um, of the labor force of uh, that is is uh, uh, or is is active on the on science and technology we see here um, southern europe mainly the southern part of, uh, of the Iberian Peninsula, Portugal and Spain and Italy lagging behind in terms of uh, this indicator, in terms of the percentage, they, they are at the forefront, but in terms of lower percentage of the labor force uh, active on uh, science and uh, technology. Less disparities here, a more uniformized map showing the employment in high tech sectors. Is there is not much, there's some, some sub regions here without uh, data, for example, which is then challenging to, to have a, a cohesive analysis. But we see here a less, uh, an indicator with less disparities and cannot really help us to, 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 bring, to bring an analysis to a stronger conclusion or statements. That's why then. Placing this pair C will be very superficial in the context of a regional geography analysis, for example, and then requires bring other indicators to, to be considered in such, a, in such an analysis. And then, uh, along with the importance of investing in research and development, and all these countries have their own policies, their schemes, uh, Southern Europe and elsewhere in Europe, uh, they also uh, have specific policies, specifically schemes, uh, supporting innovation and, for example, a smart specialization strategy can be considered one of the of the main policies supporting innovation across the European Union. And here we have data for 20, uh, uh, 2017 and also in the in the um, dark um, lines here of, of for a comparison with the data from 2010, we see that the southern countries uh, in terms of innovation performance, they remain very much similar in terms of uh, the investments in innovation or that innovation performance as a result of investment in research and development activities. And innovation policies remains close even with the difference of, 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 of some years between and, uh, and um, they are considered moderate innovators within, within the European Union still lagging behind when compared to the European Union average. The, the note here in the box highlights that uh, not investing in research and development and innovation that leads to th these regions to remaining uh, or to, to, to lagging behind in terms of their innovation capacity, in terms of their scientific capacity, and also the capacity of transforming uh, knowledge uh, 
uh, from uh, from research into a productive capacity into final products or services we comment that is also one important factor within the smart specialization strategy investing in here in areas of research that can lead to uh, a higher or a better uh, productive capacity within um, the regions of um, of the European Union. Uh, Disentangle these elements to specific countries. Again, very difficult to find the same elements, the same sorry, the same indicator for all the countries in Southern Europe. I bring here the example of Portugal, the one I was able to uh, to find. And here, what I want to underline here is again very much the same what I've been talking. If you present this graph per se without much without underlining any any uh, here, here, and events within this year, then we'll tell you, well, it's just, they have been investing considerably higher, which is somehow expected as a society has been evolving. Uh, and and uh, within this understanding of the competitive world, competitiveness, uh, um, and discourses or narratives somehow is expected. Okay, then we have to place a number of here milestones. They know that, that these milestones, timeframes, uh, uh, comparisons are important in region geography to precisely underline what is going on at the moment at, at, at the specific moment here I'm not comparing to other countries I'm putting here some milestones the accession of Portugal uh, to the European Union in 86 and now then the, the percentage of um, expenditure research and in development increase quite significantly uh, until then the financial crisis then remained rather stable and declined the years after the crisis and then only after 20 14 so let's say after the aftermath of the financial crisis 2007 2008 then the the percentage of investment in research and development activities increased substantially in what and as you may ask in electrical engineering and computer and information science so these are the main receivers of investments from the from the public sector in research and development and innovation um, uh, activities and uh, then these uh, investments, we may consider that these investments that mainly uh, uh, that increase substantially after 2014 uh, are now reflected on the most on the one recent uh, diagram here reflecting the innovation performance uh, in 2020. So investments in research and development in the case of Portugal led them to to be placed now as a strong innovator. Of course, this again requires a more in-depth analysis to, what, to understand, okay, what sectors are supporting this evolution from moderate innovators and strong innovators. And maybe this is actually a question of, of, of branding. And in, in the end, it is, if this is not reflected upon improving the quality of life, jobbing opportunities of the society, uh, somehow, reveals uh, reveals and, and and corroborates or supports part of the literature underlining that investments in such activities research and development are then or greatly contribute to the innovation performance of of the country so we have now here portugal in uh, in 2020 in a more uh, innovation performance in the better position in terms of innovation performance and you may ask what for okay then this is used okay this is used in political terms to somehow justify political agendas for example um and this is often used by by politicians in their in their in their in their agendas, in their manifestos as well, but is also used for 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 a topic that we haven't explored here very much, as as is is more part of economic geography lecture is used to sustain, eventually to boost uh, these uh, discourses on the territorial competitiveness. This performance is then used by different agencies, public and private, uh, both public and private, in in a sort of partnerships to. And then they help to position uh, countries or regions within a country in this international arena, as we call. So this this innovation is uh, Portugal as a um, as a strong innovator is then communicated to the outside world in order to attract investment or workforce to the country. So boosts or foments and sustains these these uh, policies on territorial competitiveness. 
place-based marketing activities as well, again, with the intention of attract people and investment. It is one example of a, of a, a web page or let's say a web page of a project intended to, to attract the UK investment to Portugal, why Portugal, and then they communicate the country to the outside or to potential UK stakeholders slash investors in this case, as, uh, as uh, one of the leaders in skilled and labor force, uh, also one of the leaders in terms of, um, of uh, female employment uh, um, uh, in the world, and also the language skills also as a leader in terms of um, of uh, 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 language skills in, um, in 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 language skills and businesses in business schools in Europe, so they they use these these elements. Most of them they are only here uh, or they are only communicated because uh, in the past all the efforts of investing in research and development have been uh, fruitful and help now to uh, help then the competitive position of Portugal as a leading in, la in language skills or in, in, uh, in businesses and in business schools, for example, and in terms of also the qualification of the workforce, also the costs of the labor force is still an indicator used to position Portugal within this um, uh, overall competitive, uh, uh, competitive framework involving basically all countries in Europe from um, from Africa to Southeast Asia. Then you find many other examples uh, for for uh, for other countries. Uh, not always easy to find exactly one website underlining the key elements that help the competitive position of the countries. Another element is the world talent ranking. Again, an indicator which is important to to be critical. Uh, to be critical, I and I highlight here. In the, in the next slides, the position, the overall performance of the countries in Southern Europe and Portugal, despite this, uh, that decrease of the overall, uh, the maintenance of the overall performance and decrease of some of indicators remains rather attractive in terms of a talent ranking. And most curious from this ranking is what they underline the top strengths of the country and the top weaknesses of the country. Here, the female labor force, and the, the relationship between the number of students and the number of teachers in secondary school are pointed out here as strengths in the uh, strengths of, uh, of Portugal. These for investors can, can, uh, can, can lead to many types of conclusions. And also is important that, okay, based on this, you can understand that Portugal can position itself to attract certain type of, of investments. For example, an investment that requires a considerable labor force or, uh, or, or requires that, uh, that, um, that um, students coming out from this from the secondary school are well prepared and this will eventually position them position the country differently than in comparison to countries where for example the number of uh, uh, of uh, of um, or the performance of the higher education sector universities and research centers is considerably better so they eventually they will attract other type of investment other type of activities in the country and we have here uh, spain again I like the health infrastructures here uh, as, as a strength of the country. And the position, the positions here between uh, between the position 26, position 32 is, is very, very superficial. It's important more to analyze, okay, what is contributing for this performance here. And in terms of Spain, they 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 uh, one of the strengths if is the health infrastructure, which somehow can also be used to communicate and position uh, Spain uh, as a receiver of uh, a type of, of, uh, of investment in this area. Interestingly here, you remember the slide on Greece, leaving the known lever, so students remain longer in um, uh, secondary uh, education and training. Their strengths are indeed within the primary and secondary school, mainly in terms of the relation between students and teachers which then can then be translated in a higher quality of the teaching that is delivered in this um, in this um, in this uh, in, within the education within the education system and they are leaders within this specific ranking by this source here they are leaders in this um, in this indicator Italy performing less in comparison to the other uh, to the other countries in the overall performance here. Um, their strengths are also within the secondary and primary school, and their weakness is within the 
employee training, then this is they still lagging behind considerably in terms of this indicator, and this certainly affected that overall performance. Mostly, this affects then how they place themselves in this uh, competitiveness and competitive within the, these competitiveness schemes and uh, and um, and these courses. And then I have here a number of overall conclusions that basically underline what I've been I've been telling you. There are disparities across Europe. There are also disparities in terms of research and development across Southern Europe. Uh, we have uh, we have Portugal and Greece performing considerably well. They have been improving in terms of research and development and their capacity of retaining expertise, which is uh, very um, important when analyzing um, uh, migration patterns, for example. So they've been able to retain some of their expertise, some of their brains, uh, avoiding it or overcoming the, the social troubles that emerge from brain training, which still affects substantially Spain and also Italy and mostly southern regions of Spain. That's the main conclusion here. There are also disparities within these uh, countries and uh, the slides before underlined precisely that disparities in uh, Portugal, disparities in Europe as well, as well and strong disparities also if we compare northern Italy with the southern parts of Italy. You remember also the lagging behind regions, mostly places placed in the southern part of southern Europe. Um, here are the highlights from the slides is again that Portugal, uh, after the crisis, mostly after 2014, invested uh, substantially and exceptionally in research and development. And this is now uh, coming to a fruitful uh, uh, standpoint of a higher or a better innovation performance, which then has impacts and positive impacts on the social and economic development of the of the societies. Still, uh, Spain and Italy uh, literature underlines and the data underlines that it will do better in terms of research and development. And how they have been doing that, they have been doing that uh, by using budget, national budget, budget from the from the countries, but also uh, budget from the European Union. This depends uh, the, the funding they can use or the financial scheme depends very much of the multi-annual financial package. And let's bring the discussion to today's scenario and what we, we all together uh, as European citizens are performing or working or studying within the European institution have to deal with is the Horizon Europe 2000. 2021-2027, and we are talking about here a budget of 95 billion, considerably amount, uh, with a number of um, pillars and, and clusters of domains. And you you may conclude that the main focus will be issues that are currently at stake. Certainly climate change, helping to operationalize the sustainable development goals. I believe that you are familiar with it. If not, next lecture will underline them a little bit. Um, and all the, the, the investments made through or supported through Horizon Europe, they intend uh, they intend to, to support the development, the economic development uh, of the European uh, of the European uh, European regions and support also a cohesive development across uh, the European um, the European bloc. Um, the arguments to to place such amount of budget on the horizon Europe are re, uh, regarding boosting the economic growth, promote industrial com industrial competitiveness and, and also help to place Europe in uh, uh, within this competitive arena involving United States and Southeast Asia and South and Asian countries, not necessarily Southeast Asia and Asian countries as well, and all European member states and the candidates. So the Western Balkans, for example, they can uh, submit uh, submit projects to um, to uh, to the Horizon Horizon Europe. And yourself, as a student, you can also submit uh, uh, projects to the to the Horizon Europe mainly through uh, this Marie Curie funding scheme support. Uh, mainly PhD applications and eventually masters that I'm not so sure at the moment, but it's a founding scheme that uh, ourselves, if our institutions are involved with, can can apply can apply for. Here is is a uh, uh, in terms of an, an overall having this overall understanding of the regional geography and the domains within 
regional geography. The pillar number two uh, is essential to is essential to our understanding, and these are the domains supported through the Horizon Europe. Therefore, if projects on these specific clusters, health, culture, civil security, digital industry, are if projects are developed uh, that somehow help to address issues within these domains, they will certainly receive, uh, receive specific, uh, specific funding. So the Horizon Europe is structured in, the, in, in, this, uh, in this way with this uh, central pillar, the pillar number two, mostly focused on addressing what we call grand societal challenges and the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals underline some of these challenges, the climate change, the need to mitigate climate change, aging of population, and the, the, the disparities in demographic patterns across Europe, and the food systems or how to turn the food systems and agricultural activity into a more sustainable, uh, sustainable one. And you see here the, the, the mainly receivers in terms of sectors of the founding of those 95 billion are the digital industry and space, followed by climate, energy, and mobility, sustainable mobility, uh, or mobility mainly supported through uh, renewable resources, uh, uh, food, and general and preservation of natural resources. These are also pillar and cornerstones of what we'll discuss next in terms of cross border cooperation. So, the, the uh, under the parallel policies that have been developed by the European Union, the Green Deal, the industrial strategy, somehow they align also with this founding scheme and then they pave the way for projects to emerge that could eventually then address some of these issues uh, that are taken at the core of what needs to be addressed in the horizon 2027 of the European Union development. And um, how they came to prepare this horizon here is also, I think, in the important aspect. They, of course, look to, 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 to the past, how other financial schemes have been addressing prime issues. And then they, they, uh, they, those in charge of preparing the horizon Europe as a scheme came um, with a number of conclusions. And now somehow they thought uh, a reframed perspective and they work on, on this type of missions, a mission-oriented uh, activity i will detail these and and bring to you the 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 core of these mission oriented activities they now embrace uh, addressing these grand societal challenges through missions and they also embrace more because of the need to 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 make uh, science and uh, research findings available to the overall community our own findings as students as researchers they also support more intensively open society or they have an open science policy precisely to support the overall science communication or communicating findings and scientific findings. I will explore this more detail in the next lecture. And it is important to see that the European Union, and this is certainly interesting, it could be somehow disseminated. It's important to draw lessons from previous, uh, previous experiences, previous projects, so something uh, in the better level can be achieved further on. So here what I underline is this uh, philosophy of this change of the principle of the European Union. Instead of working towards specific targets, they now want to work towards specific missions. Now, having having these strong, sometimes bold statements as is underlined here, uh, with precisely the aim of bringing different stakeholders together, also involving the, uh, the, 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 the society in general, and how, how the literature has been underlining how to do this better is to really come with this bold inspiration and measurable goals or statements that can really have an impact on the on the society still this remains in paper yet i based on what i've been reading about missions uh, there is a lot of potential to transform these missions in real practical uh, solutions and these are the five mission areas of the horizon europe uh, so broad domains here which also give a lot of of room to explore and to develop different projects one central on climate change one central on cancer another center on on uh, on the um, on the uh, um, oceans and um, and sea and the quality of uh, of uh, the water resources uh, climate neutral smart cities 
and uh, uh, one more related with the food, agriculture, but focus on the quality of the soil as this is a fundamental resource to sustain the food, uh, chain food systems across, across Europe. And again, they overall uh, help to personalize the sustainable development goals and they touch upon these grand societal challenges. Here, uh, uh, slides underlining these missions, one focus on cancer as this main uh, 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 fundamental pillar for the health of the society, uh, transforming most of the cities in climate resilient cities. He's this with a target of 2030, so further on than the own financial uh, financial scheme. Uh, the the restore the oceans and the waters that are fundamental to uh, to the ecosystems and to the population in general. Then all of these uh, different policies or strategies are developed to then help to operationalize these missions. One of the climate neutral cities by selecting initially a number of, uh, of cities, 100 cities also with the targets of uh, 2000, um, 2030. And this mainly covers and the energy sector, the mobility within these cities, so different projects are expected in this regard, and taking care of the soil as, a, as an essential component for the quality of life uh, within, um, within um, Europe. And although I mentioned to you, and then we are in the limit here of, this, of the first part, uh, this type of content within regional geography is very difficult for me to draw uh, an exam question that is one here that I will then post on them on the OLADS group uh, that ask you to characterize more or more or reflect more on the importance of, uh, of investing in the research and development. I think I have been underlining why it is important to invest in the research and development. You may have your own ideas and all of this is very much valid, is valid on the exam question when you are answering, is also valid on your mini essay. So it's important that you bring some added value to the world than to, to, to the to the being even with them, embracing here an ambitious perspective, some added value for the society we are living in or added value for yourself. If maybe you want only to, to have a moment, to have an opportunity, and maybe this mini essay is an opportunity for you to put on paper, write down your thoughts on a specific subject and the intention here and also my intention, not necessarily hidden intention and open intention is that you develop your writing capacity. I'm not expecting a right, um, yes or no or a right or wrong answers. Probably there are no wrong answers here. Everything is valid as far as you then develop your line of reasoning in an intellectual, intellectual and well-structured manner. Um, then, okay, we uh, we can embrace the break here, the 10 minutes break, but I remain open for some questions and then we'll step on the second part on the cross-border um, uh, cross cooperation in the European Union. So enjoy your break and let me know if you have, uh, if you have questions. I missed the chat here. Uh, and then I missed also one, um, one hand. Tim, would you like to intervene or you want to wait? Uh, uh, some more time, I will not stop the record, so you can, everybody will be able to listen. Um, yeah, just how it is good. It is also coding the essay, so I uh, just thought I could un uh, ask now. Mm -hmm. Please. Um, so it's about the general uh, task. I want to write about social mm -hmm. innovation systems within uh, also urban governance and planning and visions in general, how it plays an important role. And so it's, I guess, more a theoretical approach. And then I can bring some examples I found from cities, but how important uh, is this comparison and how important is it to bring uh, the regional geography approach into the essay? Because now it's more like a, a economic and yeah, kind of approach. I guess. Yeah, these are. Uh, um, I think. Th th thanks for for your for your question. Um, that if you if you for me it will be better if you write me an email so I have also some more time to think about it and answer in a more constructive manner. But uh, you are also bringing here some um, some um, strong topics that uh, they can per se individually result in a essay. How do you bring? 
the regional geography here, if you have some on the social innovation systems, for example, if you have some illustrative examples, not necessarily taking as a case study, because this will involve methodology and a bit more elaborated uh, work, and that's not what is asked here. If you have some illustrative examples from a specific location, not necessarily a region, but cities within a region, then I would I would consider this as part of the regional geography. You can also argue that uh, the social innovation systems are applied uh, or having a higher uh, impact on uh, more, uh, more smaller locations, cities or, or villages, for example, as they involve the community. They can also be placed in the overall regional context and uh, eventually a network of these innovation systems can also help to boost a regional economy. Economy is a fundamental aspect of regional, of regional geography. You talk about economic geography quite a lot. So I think there are <clears throat> a number of uh, possibilities of exploring this topic uh, within, uh, within regional geography. If you want a more detailed answer, and I've been doing uh, this to other colleagues, just write me an email, even briefly, and then I will elaborate, uh, elaborate a bit more and eventually um, Pave the way for some some uh, some literature on this on this uh, context. All okay, this, uh, thanks. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna write an uh, email too, and there's already uh, I think one literature in the OLAT I saw mm -hmm. about uh, some comparison of Barcelona and Milan and so on. So it's okay. it's interesting and uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of things I guess to say about it. It's yeah. more that it's too much into few. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so definitely these are, uh, again, uh, strong topics and then uh, yeah, to avoid the, uh, well, you, you, you can have a, a narrow down idea, but you can have this more broader uh, perspective, but having too much broader, too strong topics and not being able to detail them, that is, is, is less, less interesting. I will say focus on one specific domain because you will find literature and then try to illustrate that with one, two examples working here as a cases, then it will help to have this more conceptual part, and then you have the examples illustrating, so you don't need really to explore a lot of topics around, but if you focus on one, I will say social innovation systems and examples, how this, is, how this works in these specific locations, this is, like, I think, it's already enough. Well, it's not, I think, it's really enough within the essay. Okay, that's good okay. to know because uh, it's, I guess, for a lot of people also uh, difficult mm -hmm. to narrow it down in the end because mm -hmm. it's so many possibilities to look at uh, the topics that it's sometimes a bit overwhelming to put it on three pages in the end or to bring it together in even some sentences. <laughs> yeah, but that's this narrow down, I, narrowing down and ideas is you will be, you will be asked for in your uh, academic professional activity, I guess all the time. Maybe at some point your boss will ask you, well, you have a nice story here, but can you just bring this me in, in, in two lines? I need to present this now to the shareholders. Maybe we'll be asked to do this. And so if you start now somehow improving your narrowing down idea, I guess this will be helpful for your, uh, for your career, whatever the, 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 the domain of career you will follow. But I think we are all asked sometimes to, to narrow down our ideas and be uh, as short as possible, but coming with some content, I think, is a nice exercise for you to develop this capacity of narrowing down one idea and focus on what, uh, focus on one domain, on one topic, and try to really debate it uh, uh, with, with a con in a constructive manner. Okay, thanks. That okay, made thanks. it more clear. So when we have a question here, Clavi, that you, I'm, I'm reading is it uh, on the on the startup scene, scene in Southern Europe. Mm -hmm. All right, then, okay. Uh, so Clavi here is, is, in, is in the library and he cannot put the question through voice. So then he asked about the startup scene, some data on the startup scene in Southern Europe. I will look at it. Uh, probably the Eurostat um, will, um, will uh, be a useful source here. Um, 
startup. I had, I had a colleague of yours last year writing about startups, but more on the on the surf industry. And he had difficulties of finding a, a specific data for the overall Europe, only some specific regions in, in France and other in Portugal, for example. But we'll look at it and then, uh, then I will uh, then share with you also some uh, all the performance of startup. Uh, yeah, it seems, uh, seems this is uh, indeed um, a relevant uh, uh, page here. But uh, I guess this is not for your essay as you are writing in a different, uh, in a different, uh, in a different topic. It's more for a, a general interest that it, that's correct. Okay, good. All right, and we have now two, uh, two minutes here and um, then we'll continue uh, the lecture. So I can tell something more about the essay for those that are uh, listening or those that will be watching the recording later then. And some of you have been writing to me via email is always better. So I have some time also to think about what you are asking, uh, or commenting on the topic. And I've been doing that uh, uh, this week and also in the past week. And I'm always in favor or try to be always in favor of your topic. That's, that's something that I believe that attracts you and is always uh, very, very important to have this motivation to write, to, to write about. And, um, and again, as I also wrote on the group, you can write this more in an academic style with a number of references in between. But you can also, uh, can also write in a more opinion style, opinion style uh, essay. Uh, important is again to, to focus on the topic, develop it through in a constructive manner and come with, a, with, an interesting, with an interesting message. And again, there are no rights or wrongs here. The idea is to help you to, to develop this capacity of narrowing down one idea and, uh, and uh, exploring it, uh, embracing this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, key uh, message from the regional geography context, and it is important. That if this was, for example, uh, a module on on uh, on planning theory, special planning theory, or or in economic geography theories, where we have one book that basically tells you everything you need to know, then then I will need to be more strict on the essay assessment. But as you see that, that, that I've been building this module, then when they asked me to teach regional geography, it was very challenging to prepare these 11 lectures. And I still thinking um, in a critical way that 11 lectures are far too much to cover regional geography uh, in, uh, without, in Southern Europe without having here a core domain in terms of theory. So if we are talking about uh, economic geography, spatial planning theory with a number of concepts why, widely debated on the literature, then I will need to ask you to be more precise. But, but because I'm also building these slides based on the number of different sources, not following specifically a book because I couldn't find one nice book up to date on the regional geography of Southern Europe, I, can, I have to remain flexible in that assessment and also flexible on how you present or how you present the essay. So I hope this is being clear. Maybe it's different than what other colleagues are doing at the university, but I don't really, uh, it's not really much of my concern. What is of my concern is that you will learn really something here that is useful for your forthcoming studies or forthcoming professional um, activities. So when it's, the lectures are indeed a compilation of different data, compilation of, uh, of literature, and, uh, and they also require a lot, of, a lot of investment from my side to, to bring what is more really uh, to date here on these uh, on this specific, uh, specific elements. Again, if I was following exclusive one book, then the scenario will certainly be much less flexible, a bit more rigid. But another component here is that we are all together embracing here very complicated times. And uh, why should I bring uh, more burden onto you with a serious structure of the essay? So just be free, explore the idea in the constructive intellectually developed manner. And I will certainly be uh, very happy with the results um, in, in the end. And okay, stepping now towards the second part of the lecture. And again, 
this component of the cross-border relations is, is uh, uh, also the result of my own experience is an important an important domain when talking about uh, uh, regional geography in Europe, regional geography of, uh, of Southern Europe. One of these, um, uh, uh, some of these lines, they bring more conceptualized uh, definitions of cross-border cooperation. Others, they bring a number of examples from different sources. So again, uh, I also embrace this flexibility in preparing, um, in preparing the lectures. And this first slide tries to bridge the previous uh, uh, the first part of electron research and development, and that are part of the literature more concerned are the importance of cross-border collaboration, cross-border relations, cross-border cooperation in research and development. They acknowledge that then knowledge is, uh, is not bounded by national borders, is not bounded by a specific well-defined administrative geography, but knowledge flows across borders, uh, uh, involves different types of expertise, uh, sometimes bounded by uh, is an institutional uh, uh, frame, but sharing knowledge uh, should uh, or should not, should not respect per se uh, geography. So that is a fundamental aspect uh, while studying uh, research and development across Hebrew, across Europe bring the cross-border collaboration uh, onto the discussion. That's what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm trying to, to do it here. And um, other justifications is that uh, this uh, cross-border knowledge or exploring research and development across border is again fundamental for the competitiveness of Europe and is also fundamental to support the uh, productivity within the, um, the within the within the European, the European Union. And there are a number of policies and projects as well intended to specifically support cross-border uh, uh, knowledge. And we can put in the example of the Erasmus program uh, um, in, this, in this context. But then specifically, I focus more here on the cross-border cooperation as is defined by the European Union. And are, there are somehow two types here of, uh, also coming from the same definition, there are two types or two vertices vertices of this cross-border cooperation. So, and, and I, in part of them, I will be reading the slides here as these are uh, core definitions. So cross-border is about promoting this cooperation between European countries and neighborhood countries as well. They share a land border or a sea crossing. So they are in closer physical, proximity in closer geographical proximity and there this is the geography of a cross border uh, works within european countries but also involves countries that are uh, that are border land or sea with the european union as a as a block and currently the cross border cooperation in europe how it is organizes how, how it is supported through policies very much reflects the European Union territorial cooperation model that the, the link here provides you the details on this um, on this cooperation model. Overall aims, this will come through on the next slides, promoting economic and social development in border areas. Sometimes border areas are also or equal also this lagging behind areas. The aim is to address some of the common challenges within these uh, border areas, from the environment to economic aspects to public public health, safety and security, and also offer and or improving the social conditions and offer better uh, better services to the citizens living in these border e e regions. And this goes from labor mobility. To, uh, to transportation to transportation and improving the commuting patterns, for example, in these um, border uh, areas. There is indeed a specific legal framework supporting this overall definition. That's the so-called Madrid uh, Convention from uh, 1980. So you also see that cross-border cooperation emerged quite earlier on uh, within the European Union, much before the, the engagement or the assessment of Portugal and Spain, for example, onto, onto the blog. Other countries or uh, earlier founders, they have been benefit, benefiting from, uh, 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 from cross-border cooperation. And uh, again, concerns these actions that are specifically prepared, uh, planned, designated to reinforce and foster, and foster 
neighborhood relations between territorial communities or authorities, not necessarily countries, states at the national level, but also sub, uh, sub uh, administrative areas and sometimes uh, some specific private partners, for example, we'll see examples of this within one jurisdiction of the European Union and other contracting parties. And the point that it is important to underline here is that are within this overall uh, framework of uh, uh, cross-border cooperation, European Union uh, understands this uh, cross-border cooperation in two different domains. One that involves essentially neighborhood countries and what that involves mainly uh, regions within uh, the European Union. I come first with the, the vector or domain or pillar of the cross-border cooperation that involves the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood countries, and it's called the European Neighborhood Instrument. So this is uh, this can be underlined as the cooperation behind the European Union internal borders. They have they work through six target areas. They cover nine priority areas with a budget of about 15 billion. And they cover here areas such as human rights and justice, um, education and employment, and energy cooperation, climate adaptation. So also some of these grand societal challenges intended to be addressed through this um, uh, instrument. Uh, and here, these are the countries that are involved. Not all of them have currently active uh, programs um, uh, within this um, within this um, uh, instrument. So one of the pillars of the cross border cooperation is cooperation with neighborhood countries, those countries that do not yet uh, integrate the European Union, such as the Western Balkans, and countries that will eventually never um, uh, integrate the European Union, such as countries in the Northern Africa and uh, and um, and Middle East as well. So, and not all the European countries are involved in this in this instrument supporting the external relations between member European Union member states and neighborhood countries. These are only the countries currently involved and. Uh, Another element here, and one that is difficult to grasp at current times because of these uh, geopolitical discussions involving essentially Ukraine and Russia, for example, there are uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine, they are part of this instrument, yet the, the, how they are currently dealing with the support uh, on this context, such as also the case of Belarus, remains uh, difficult to grasp. And one who was preparing the slides, I tried to find some information on this level, but then I couldn't find. They only give the information that the United Kingdom, Azerbaijan, Algeria, and Libya, as well as Syria, they are currently suspended from, um, they do not participate on this uh, instrument, or they are uh, suspended of participating, such as Syria, for the reasons we probably are all aware of this conflicts and geopolitical conflicts um, um, as well. So it's, it's, a, it's an instrument that that exists uh, in terms of uh, in institutional terms and jurisdictional terms, yet the, its applicability in practice remains rather blurred at, the, at, this, uh, at this moment of January 2022. Six target areas, and they very much align uh, or, or what is going on in the cross-border cooperation within the European Union borders, not involving the neighborhood countries, is very much the same. Human rights, support integration in the European Union internal market by supporting, for example, small, small and medium-sized enterprises, uh, supporting the mobility of the citizens, uh, trying to address uh, poverty uh, and support internal economic, social and territorial cohesion of the European of the European bloc, European Union and neighborhood and over neighborhood countries and foster collaboration across different types of domains. And they use this 15 billion money to support some of this uh, network of arrangements across across borders and uh, there's a lot of of um, um, examples here to illustrate this cross border within this uh, european neighborhood instrument and um, some of them probably in the in the not so developed uh, uh, situation those two that i have a stronger knowledge and they are more dynamic are the black sea uh, uh, cross-border cooperation and the Mediterranean Sea. And I'm touching upon examples of these two because they they also are located in the Southern Europe. So we remain focused on the regional geography of Southern Europe. Here also yet to, to, to be um, assessed within the currently framework 2021-2022 
2027 is, is yet to be seen what is going on in terms of cross-border cooperation in these Black sea, within the Black Sea program, one of the programs of the uh, supported by this uh, specific instrument. So we have a number of core regions, part of them members of the European Union, others no members of the European Union, and not all of them are involved in the sense that they have active um, active projects going on and again remains a challenge to understand how this will be developed further on towards 2027 uh, within the new multi-annual financial framework and of course also for the questions for political questions uh, Crimea remains out of this Black Sea um, the Black Sea uh, program and um, and the active uh, the, the projects that are active they probably also give you some ideas uh, for, for an essay if this is a geography that is of your interest they are uh, the examples of projects developed by partners within this um, this uh, um, within the black sea program they cover environmental protection uh, solid waste management so very much day to day uh, day-to-day -day activities here that involve the life of the citizens in daily basis, facilitate trade and uh, within, of agro-food products, for example, and support innovation and tourism activities. So mostly activities that are core to some of these, uh, some of these territories. And all these sources, uh, uh, if you click you know, in, this, uh, in these active projects in green, then you will be able to see who is involved, with, the actors involved, with, and their, uh, their milestones as well. Another uh, program within uh, supported through this instrument that covers substantially part or, or all the southern geography, uh, the, the southern region of, uh, of here is the Mediterranean uh, uh, Sea program again remains to be seen what is going on or what will happen within the next uh, within this um, uh, multi-annual financial framework so it covers substantially part of portugal southern spain italy and greece and also neighborhood countries some of them still uh, 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 not il eligible or they are not participating at, at the moment at the moment so and then there are also only a number of projects currently being founded by the program or currently active within uh, this uh, this uh, mediterranean sea program and these are again very much in line with the uh, uh, overall target areas agro food system uh, supporting sustainable tourism coastal zone management water management solar energy so they also align with this need of addressing the grand societal challenges and yet uh, you heard about the 15 billion within this instrument and you may think well this is enough money to support all the project but that is not true it happens the same when we as a researchers are submitting an application to, to horizon europe 95 billion so lots of money but only a very uh, few percentage of projects are actually founded by the by the union in this in this case out of the 300 proposals presented, only 19 projects have been uh, approved or received received funding from the from the European Union or within this C um, uh, C program. Then, from this instrument supporting the relations between European Union member countries, member states, uh, and uh, neighborhood countries, we focus now on the uh, cross border cooperation within the European borders, and these. Uh, these uh, projects developed within this um, this principle, European Cross World Cooperation, they are mainly supported through the Interreg uh, program, precisely uh, with the aim of supporting territorial development and uh, cohesive territorial development across uh, the regions uh, of the European Union, mainly involving uh, that's uh, number three level region. So we have the uh, the graph, the slide next exemplifies this. We have the major socioeconomic regions, the member states, and then we have these subdivisions. We talked about that earlier on. Some of them, they are called provinces, other of them are calling only uh, administrative territories, such as in Portugal, without a regional structure. Others are called uh, regions or mo metropolitan regions, as in the case of uh, Italy. And more uh, uh, recent, playing a fundamental role in operationalized in the cross-border cooperation, we have the figure of the euro regions and basically currently 
the cross-border cooperation is taking place within euro regions and the main projects are coming through the involvement of uh, cities that are located in different member states and then they form uh, uh, euro region the slide uh, the slides next will also exemplify that so European cross-border cooperation, the cooperation that occurs within the European borders, mainly focus on supporting the level number three of these um, uh, unities, territorial unities of statistic. Uh, here, the examples of Portugal, we'll talk about uh, this earlier on, the case of the provinces within the autonomous community of Spain, and here the highly diversify the uh, division of the nuts level three in Spain, as well as in Greece uh, with the northern part and the southern part. So these are the beneficiaries, the receivers of uh, the most of the funding coming from the cross-border cooperation channels, basically supported through the Interreg, Interreg uh, Europe with the idea again of supporting this cohesion policy uh, or the operationalization of the cohesion policy of, um, uh, of from the European Union. Uh, and then this, this uh, the Interreg program uh, came through or gain importance precisely because uh, to, to help to operationalize the cohesion policy in 2000 and uh, and a number of then developments occur in this context and the slide here intends to underline why this cross-border cooperation is important and not only because of 37 percent of the european population lives in these border areas but also because some of these border areas because of their precise of that geographical position distant in most of the case from uh, central metropolitan areas still lagging behind in some uh, in some indicators which is then not aligned with European cohesion policy then the interact gain force precisely to support these border uh, border areas and a number of mechanisms and programs exist to make this possible. And one of the mechanisms uh, and the most common one is the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation involves sometimes only two member states or two regions within two different member states, such as Galicia and Northern Portugal, for example. It also involves in other contexts multiple uh, private partners and they, uh, they is a, is a an institutionalized uh, form of uh, supporting cross-border cooperation in, um, in the European Union. And uh, what are here the main domains or the main programs developed through uh, cross-border cooperation as a program and through the, the European uh, Union pro program Interreg. So the, the, the core idea came uh, or, or emerged still from the context of uh, frictions between countries some of these regions they they have they faced in the past a lot of uh, conflicts and frictions and and their language uh, differences also led in some cases to cultural frictions as well so the idea or the preliminary idea of the internet was to to to, to balance these relationships and and create friends among Earl, uh, among uh, former enemies, for example, and this, of course, evolved as a society, evolved to address some more concrete day-to-day -day issues involving risk prevention, uh, uh, emergency services, for example, and this is quite common in northern Portugal and Galicia. Um, and but these are the main domains, uh, the main investments within the cross-border funding scheme. Not many differences involving uh, these different areas, uh, improving knowledge and innovation here as, as one of the main receivers, environment and risk prevention, uh, also uh, healthcare and social inclusion. This also includes labor, labor activities and labor rights as well, and the labor mobility and accessibility also one of the key domains. There are examples across Europe of, of, of uh, uh, agreements facilitating cross-border emergency services, for example. So an, an ambulance in the case of, of, a, of a catastrophe, for example, in one, in one region doesn't need to stop to cross the border. They, they, they are free through these different protocols to assist neighborhood, uh, neighborhood regions, neighborhood countries, and then place uh, the uh, place uh, place those in need in the different uh, uh, in the different hospitals. 
within the same region. There's a lot of efforts uh, being developed to facilitate the emergency services in these border areas, and also a lot of, of programs and projects supporting labor, mo labor mobility within these border areas. And Galicia and Northern Portugal actually have been leading in this, in this regarding, and through their different projects, they actually helped or influenced uh, decisions making uh, taking place across uh, or influencing now all other European uh, European regions. The slides will illustrate that um, that um, as well. So we have here now a more we leave this more conceptual part uh, of the cross border cooperation to enter a more practical one with some core examples on the cross border cross border in southern Europe. As you see here, the map shows the different different programs in Central Europe, in the Nordic countries, and I will not be focused on that. I focus mostly on the southern part of Europe. Here, Portugal and Spain, mostly, then uh, with the, the exception of the Lisbon greater area, all the country is, uh, all the regions within the country, that's level three, and Euro regions are involved within some type of cross-border cooperation, mainly supported through the Interreg program, uh, through the Interreg program. Uh, two of them more focused on, on uh, Spain and Portugal and uh, the autonomous communities of uh, uh, Madeira and Azores and Canary, uh, Canary Islands in the, in the case of Spain, and also the Interreg supporting the cross-border relations between uh, Spain and France uh, and France as well. And these are, again, the main areas and they still common across all these uh, programs in Southern Europe, labor markets, education, social security, transportation, industry and trade planning, special planning as well, and the public services. Uh, larger territories, larger borders, such as the case of Italy, additional interreg slash cross-border programs. Here, those are, uh, these are the programs uh, involving Italy and Greece in southern part of Europe. And, and you see how they uh, explore these relationship with their, with their neighborhood, neighborhood countries as well. A lot of details also in the sources through these programs. And a couple of examples here of these, uh, on this operationalization of these policy areas. Um, one example here was intended to boost this grow and cohesion in the European Union border region. So let's say the Interreg places this call to the, to the partners and then is up to the countries uh, to develop specific projects. And in this case, Spain and Portugal, they came together to work uh, on the recognition of qualifications to support labor mobility. And uh, years ago, I have been involved in, uh, in such a study uh, and which paved the way for a simplification of the recognition of the qualifications of workers. Currently, at the present, uh, this, is, uh, this is done through a much more uh, uh, streamlined process of recognition of the diplomas uh, from the Portuguese side and the Spanish side. And then that's it, the market works as a, as a common market, the labor market works as a common and is very easy for a, a, a Portuguese worker to work in Spain and is also very easy for a Spanish to work in Portugal. The recognition of the di diplomas as well as the facilitation of the commuting and the, the in terms of taxes as well, these have been simplified through the years, but through a number of uh, projects and negotiations involving different member states. So one of the best examples that we can give in terms of cross as a positive result of a cross-border cooperation is the recognition of diplomas uh, in Europe, which actually started uh, through the negotiations taking place between the autonomous community of Galicia and the region of northern, northern Portugal. How, why this has happened? This has happened because the market started changing and, and the, the lack of labor in Galicia called for Portuguese workers to uh, move to, to, to start working in, uh, in Spain. And then they start encountering a lot of difficulties. They, 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 they then expose these difficulties to politicians and decision makers. And then the, the, some of the European Union step up and through the mechanism of the Interreg uh, was able to support uh, the involvement of these, uh, the, uh, of, these, uh, of these recognition of diplomas to facilitate the quality of life of the citizens to the point that 
part of this recognition now is integrated within the European Union legislation through different, uh, uh, different types of legislation and including the Bologna agreement that came more in the recent times somehow can be can be placed as a result of these different calls from different European Union member states to simplify, to streamline the recognition of diplomas and streamline also the education, uh, the education across the European Union. But again, sources underline the, that Galicia and Portugal drew cross-border cooperation, they were the pioneers in this streamlining of the qualification slash education and training of the workforce. Um, here another example that involves more uh, an administrative slash business handovers from Greece and Bulgaria. Here, uh, the, the, some of the justification is that the Bulgarian small and medium-sized enterprises, they were facing difficulties while trying to enter the Greek market. So a number of regular meetings start taking place between uh, Greek and Bulgarian uh, uh, stakeholders. And a number of agreements they came through to, to facilitate cross-border uh, trade involving uh, different partners in Greece and in Greece and uh, Bulgaria. The sources underline that difficulties remain um, in this in this context, but the planned meetings and planned agreements are here aimed to, to harmonize and try to build a common framework, a common legislative framework, simplifying the 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 business activities mainly involving small and medium-sized enterprises in these two, uh, in, in, in Greece and Bulgaria. And we also underlined this earlier on that the small and medium-sized enterprises, they are a, a fundamental factor of the economic geography of uh, Southern Europe. And this particularly is currently being more experimented. You also, I also mentioned this value of experimenting and the cross-border experimentation, uh, cross-border uh, Experimentation within cross-border also happens uh, quite a lot. And at this moment, this uh, uh, experimentation of facilitating uh, business uh, activities in Greece and Bulgaria is mainly taking place in this Euro region. In, in this Euro region. So a smaller, uh, a smaller scale territorial unity here working as a, as a, as a, as a platform to the development of of a, a higher or eventual more macro level uh, policies in the context of uh, the uh, trade and business activities in different uh, in different European Union member uh, member states. Um, underlining here the examples of the of the Euro regions because, as I said in the beginning, they play a fundamental role in the cross border in operationalizing the cross border cooperation literature, uh, academic literature eh, and grey literature or literature from the European Union, for example, underlines kind of the importance of the Euro regions in cross-border cooperation. They actually say that Euro regions means exactly, they already mean cross-border cooperation without such a type of cooperation involving border regions, Euro regions, they wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, exist. Uh, they are characterized by more or less institutionalized collaboration. Some of them, they are more institutionalized. Uh, so they, we are talking about, for example, two cities composing this Euro region. So they both have administrat uh, an administrative and political capacity to decide. For example, others, they work more as, a, as on the basis of the informal arrangements, and they also involve a number of uh, private actors in this context, and they very much cover this priority areas we have been talking about from environmental aspects to supporting labor mobility. So currently talking about cross-border cooperation means talking about the importance of the Euro regions in this, uh, this cross-border cooperation. Focus again on Southern Europe. There are a number of Euro regions uh, in Southern Europe, uh, mostly, in a, mostly in a involving Portugal. Uh, Portugal and Spain, uh, as and Portugal, Spain, and southern and parts of France as well. But there are also a number of um, the Euro regions in the Mediterranean and Adriatic area, and I will give examples of uh, some of them. And then, then the the sources underline that some of them they are rather complex. For example, the the, the Euro region along the um, Douro River between Portugal and Spain highly complex, mostly uh, local in terms of self-government, but they involve uh, a high complex structure with more than 30 actors coming together to 
development projects and this always makes the makes the operationalization of such a sh such project uh, uh, much more difficulty when compared for example to uh, to uh, uh, the the euro region of galicia northern portugal and this galicia northern portugal euro region they have a sub uh, euro region which then is defined as the euro city so uh, euro region with uh, with the euro cities located and acting or, or or personalizing within the Euro region, as the case of the um, the Euro city Chaves, a Portuguese city, and Verin, a city in in Galicia, they are part of the Euro region. So, as you may imagine, uh, is, is as as in such an institutional context of a well defined and reduced and a shorter number of actors or personalizing projects such as the one supporting labor mobility is certainly much uh, much easier in comparison to highly elaborated involving different actors as in other contexts of um, of um, of europe so here to underline this this the, the, that defining our regions is rather complex some of them are composed only by two regions in uh, two member states others involve different actors public and private in the, across different member states priority areas or policy issues addressed within this cross-border um, cooperation in euro regions economic development transportation environments and education this is quite common and most most uh, most of the projects developed by these euro regions or the euro cities within these euro regions they cover these um, cover these areas the largest number of euro regions are located in the southwestern part of uh, of euro of europe the iberian peninsula portugal spain and parts of uh, france uh, uh, france as well here a number of examples and best practices or the best examples here and we'll be spending the remaining minutes on these examples this is basically to give you an idea of what is going on in terms of cross-border cooperation as i said in the beginning will be very superficial in my point of view at this level of, of education to ask you, please define a cross-border cooperation in Galicia, Northern Portugal that will force you to go on this, uh, on this source and then detail it what everybody can read. So I expect some more elaborated, uh, elaborated answers in this context. So do not expect a question on the exam about uh, these examples I bring you on the next, uh, on the next minutes. The idea here is to, to, for you to understand what type of uh, main projects and those those that have a higher impact on society have been developed in these uh, in these euro regions in the case of galicia northern portugal with a strong tradition in cooperation far beyond the european union and far beyond the institutionalization of the cooperation through this grouping european grouping of territorial cooperation they've been using this uh, social and cultural ties even language proximity to implement some specific pro projects helping the citizens within this euro region and one of the examples is this Jankobos program supporting the mobility of uh, uh, teachers and uh, um, uh, higher education and, uh, employees uh, in in a in a exchanging institutions between Galicia and Northern Portugal and spending a, a it is a kind of Erasmus within the euro region uh, mostly with the aim of, of boosting the training of the teachers uh, in Galicia and Northern Portugal. And this is taken as an example of the as taken as an example of uh, of this cooperation. There is the Google Maps link here that will place you within the Galicia and Northern Portugal. Within this Euro region, Chaves Verin Euro City is also a, a, a good example on how the things uh, can work in terms of cross-border cooperation. They also uh, benefit here from long, uh, long-term uh, relationship uh, in terms of their in terms of their cooperation. Again, much far beyond the cooperation support through an European mechanism uh, itself, the interreg or the formal uh, or the uh, uh, formal administration of the cross-border relations through this um, European grouping of territorial cooperation. And the best example here, slightly different than the one before, is 
on thermal and water uh, management or with the aim of using natural resources within both sides of the region, uh, Chaves and Verin, to uh, support the, the local and economic developments. And uh, here I would like to, to do the open uh, this and I have to see if the if you can see the okay I think now you are you able to see the the map right I guess you are all able yes. to see the yes so it's for you to have an idea uh, that's that the so we have a Portugal the Iberian Peninsula this is not uh, uh, located, so it's, it's a region in the, within the northern Portugal and Galicia. And you see here the proximity, we have the border area, you see how close they are and the Euro city is located here. That's the location of the, of the institution per se. And then they work really across the border in terms of, uh, they have different types of projects. And one of the main one is to explore thermal tourism in both sides of the, of the city. So we have the city of Shams here and the city of Verding, and then they work along this, uh, uh, along this um, territorial area in different in different um, in different domains including the the emergency services uh, that across across uh, the border so one another example here and um and i change again to the to the presentation and i have a question from okay not a question that you were able to see so then you have here you can grasp better the location of the city and another project again uh, completely different than the one before, more focus on boosting environmental and ecological conservation or preservation of biodiversity along the Douro River, uh, a river that for you that are for those that are more familiar with uh, with Porto that uh, that covers uh, the entire territory of northern Portugal and uh, until uh, until Galicia. And here the goal of this uh, European grouping of territorial co cooperation rather complex involving different actors you see here most of them uh, uh, are from the local side but others so they are private actors involved as well involves really a large number of actors in both sides of the border so developing such a project with uh, uh, and then assessing its effectiveness is certainly rather complicated and it covers aspects from environment uh, from local economic development and here the main project the poor project that is highlighted is essentially on the biodiversity uh, preservation also uh, another one uh, now going a bit further towards uh, the northern part of Spain one essentially here intended to support the um, uh, transportation and the, the more the commuting involving different uh, the different border areas in Spain and France to the point that they have they have a bus corridor precisely with the aim of facilitating the mobility of labor force between uh, or within this uh, within this uh, euro region and um, I go through now the examples to touch upon these two cases and then enter the other part of southern Europe uh, no so the examples earlier on they they show most of the involvement of uh, local authorities but there are also uh, projects uh, involving uh, specific institutions such as this the hospital the hospital per se works as a european grouping of territorial cooperation so within the framework of the european union cooperation uh, they, uh, they 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 accept or they support not only uh, uh, local governments coming together not only regions coming together but also such type of uh, of, of institutions and hospital working as a cross-border hospital. The same applies to the uh, Tagus Natural Park. And so not necessarily here, uh, 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 solely the formal constituted region or city uh, working within this interreg uh, cross-border cooperation program, but 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 uh, 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 as, as, as a project per se that, that Operationalize or helps to operationalize the cross border cooperation in southern parts of Europe. And very much the same happens in the Mediterranean and Adriatic area. We have similar projects, some of them uh, um, within the Euro regions involving more the administrative, administrative arrangements to facilitate the governance, the overall governance of. Uh, 
uh, of, uh, of, of the Euro region. They have rather complex structures involving local and regional uh, actors here in this context. Others uh, also very much related with the industrial and transportation activity, and also others more to the level of somehow anticipating pro, uh, possible uh, possible uh, environmental catastrophes. Uh, in the case he is in Sicily and Malta, uh, for example, and we also have within this Mediterranean and Adriatic uh, projects not led by uh, a specific region or city, but led by a, a number of uh, a number of. Uh, a number of institutions, in this case, these are reserves or national parks that are formalized as European grouping of territorial cooperation. So they have, they are in a better place to apply for funding from the uh, from the Interreg. So I'm happy that I was able within the time, uh, more or less, to cover these cross-border cooperation. So we leave the sustainability transitions to the lecture number ten. So do you have any specific question this regarding? Uh, please let me know and uh, you know that I, I am always available via email to clarify uh, some issues you have about the essay, um, provide you some guidance on the topic if you need it and just please uh, reach out and I will be uh, ready to reply and as soon as, as, as I can of course. So I wish you all the rest uh, of the a good rest of the week and I will see you all next week for sustainability transitions. But please let me know still if you have some questions, those that are still online. Thank you. Thank you.